Hi and welcome to Geeks for Geeks. I am Sadat Hazra and today we would be discussing the boundary traversal of a matrix. So this problem is self-explanatory itself but if you are an absolute beginner you might not know that what is this matrix concept is all about. Basically matrix is nothing not a separate data structure it is basically a 2D array and it forms a matrix and you need to traverse all the boundary elements itself. So now if you see the hint itself you would get the very first hint but moving forward to that I would also cover the hint as well as the solution itself. So now let us see the very first test case. So in the first given test case we see that the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11 and 12 and then we have 13, 14, 15 and 16 itself. Now let us see the address of it. If you don't know I would just revise that thing for you. So basically the address of this one is 00, zero. this is zero 01, this is zero 02, this is zero 03. In the same manner this is 10, this is 11, one one. this is 12 two and this is one three okay so this is how it would progress itself so this would be again two three this would be three three one zero two zero and three zero three one and three two okay so now printing out the boundary elements mean that you need to print this one this one this one this one okay so now we can see that we need to print 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just break down all the things. Like the very first one we are talking about is this one. Okay. So to print 1, 2, 3, 4, what we can really do is we can start with the 0th row and print all the numbers in the column like we can start a for loop let's say the number of rows are r and the number of columns is c so we go to the zero with row okay and then we print all the numbers in the zero with row okay we get through all the columns of the zero with row so we go from zero till i is less than column and i plus plus and basically we print all the values of a0 and ai this is how we would print the very first one that is 1 2 3 4 so the very first row is done let's talk about the very next thing that is 4 3 12 16 one thing to note here is that if you observe that if i print this then if i again print this this element is printed two times so we need to prohibit or just omit the duplication okay because in the answer it would be one two three four and then it would be eight four won't be repeated again so we need to start from the second row now okay why because this element this particular element would be covered twice itself so now we would start from the first row okay we would start from the first row then go to the second row and third row of what the column so if there are c columns then we would iterate on cth minus one column okay why because it is zero indexing okay on the zero indexing we would go from one row one till the last row that is i is less than row this is how you would print eight 12 and 16 then we would talk about in this fashion that is we need in the same thing would happen again now that is if we print this and if we print this 16 would be printed again so this time we need to start from the back and we need to omit the last row okay last column so last column minus 1 would be nothing but c minus 2 that is we are at this and then the constant thing would be nothing but the last row so last rows value is r minus 1 
and this for loop would start from the second last column that is c minus 2 and c is greater than equal to 0 and c minus minus here everything would be plus plus and this one is given to you as a homework okay i have explained this i have explained this i have explained this so this one would be your homework to figure it out so that you understand the concept correctly okay just apply the same thing this would be repeated again this would be repeated again so you just need to repeat this one so this is how you would keep zero constant and you would iterate on the column here you would keep the column constant and you would iterate on the row here you would keep the row constant and you would iterate on the column now let's move forward to the implementation and this would make more sense there is one small base case or the corner case that needs to be handled that is if it is only one row or one column in that scenario it would be one column so the boundary elements would be all the elements up till that point okay let me just show you also that let's say a particular number is something like this so boundary elements would be all this let's say a particular array has just this then it would be just this basically it is nothing but a 1d array okay either in horizontal form or vertical form so we need to take care of that small corner case now let's move back to the implementation and this would make more sense so we need to return a vector so we would copy this and we would paste this and we would name it as the answer variable okay the output one now we would be handling the corner cases that is if number of rows is equals to one okay then we would print all the values for int i is equals to zero and then we would simply go while i is less than m so we need to print all the values of that particular row so we would say answer dot push back m we would change this from matrix to m and this as n and m is good enough okay no this should be r and this should be column so if r number of rows is equals to 1 then i is less than column and then m of what 0 dash i plus plus uh, we would print the i and then we need to increment i so this is done now we would do the same thing for column so we would say else if the number of columns is equals to equals to 1 then we would do again the same thing but the only edit is that the number of i is less than column and this would be i plus plus and this would be the value 0 okay and this would start making more sense at the end we have like the number of rows and number of columns are more than one. either the number of rows and columns are more than one so now what we really need to do is we need to say for int j is equals to 0 j is less than column and j plus plus and this would be nothing but answer dot push back m of 0 comma j okay this is done after that the first row has been printed so we need to start from the second element of the second row and the corner elements so we would copy this again and now let's just see what we really need to edit this would start from the second element so j needs to be less than equal to and we would print the last row last number of rows itself and then we would simply say matrix of j comma m minus 1 the last one this is done after this is done we would need to iterate on m minus 2 last plus 1 the last one is m minus 1 then just before 1 because the last one is would be overlap so we need to start from the 1 so this would be m minus 2 and it would be greater than 0 so i would just copy this here it would be j is equals to m minus 2 j is greater than equal to 0 and it would be j minus minus and the answer would be nothing but row 
माइनस वन कॉमा जे एंड दिस वुड बी नथिंग बट कॉलम माइनस टू एंड वी आर डन एट दिस पॉइंट नाउ द वेरी लास्ट वन वी नीड टू जस्ट प्रिंट अगेन द सेम थिंग बट वी नीड टू द लास्ट वन विच वॉज गिवन टू यू एज अ होमवर्क सो दिस वुड बी रो माइनस टू आई इज ग्रेटर देन इक्वल टू वन एंड जे माइनस माइनस हेयर इट वुड बी नथिंग बट जे ऑफ जीरो and then we would simply return the answer variable now let us see how many errors i am making mostly with r and c and i would be making the error itself m and j of m minus 1 m was what row and column so this would be c minus 1 again let us see this if i make sense seems like this should be correct and this is correct now let us submit this and see if we can get an ac or not okay so a small bit of edit during the implementation and now has that instead of just naming the matrix as m the because m here is the number of column so i just named it as mat so i need to write less and n and m is retained this is the same solution which is given so now let us just try to submit this and see if we can get an ac or not because it might lead to con confusion so i just stated it so now let us try to submit this and see if we can get an ac and yes we got and ac so the time complexity of the problem is the number of boundary elements itself so you just need to subtract the number of elements by the boundary elements and that would be the time complexity because we are processing each element exactly once so that's it for today this is me siddharth azra signing off thank you